Okay, the project for today is to work on our auxiliary vacuum pump for the brake system. I've mentioned in a couple other videos that we have a vacuum pump from Summit Racing that is connected into the vacuum line to the brake booster. And the way this is supposed to work is when the vacuum pressure from the manifold gets too low, say down at 10 inches of mercury, this should detect that and kick on and maintain vacuum in the brake booster. And this is particularly important if you're going down a big hill and the engine dies and so you don't have engine vacuum anymore. And this, because it's electric, will kick on, maintain vacuum so you still have brakes even if the engine dies. Well, what we found is that lately, this is just running almost all the time. Uh, it used to come on only occasionally when you first started the engine or at idle, but now it, it, it's running quite often. And so I put a vacuum gauge on this, and I'll show that here in just a minute, and found that it was building up 20 inches of vacuum. And instead of coming on when the vacuum dropped down to, say, 15 inches or 10 inches, it was coming on almost immediately as soon as the vacuum dropped below 20 inches. And I did a little bit of troubleshooting. There's this vacuum uh, switch at the top here, which is supposed to detect that vacuum. There's a set screw on the back where you should be able to adjust the pressure that it turns on at, but none of that seems to be working. Um, I found that no matter how I turn the set screw, it, it doesn't make a difference. So I bought a new one of these switches. It goes into this area here. There must be a couple of terminals that it attaches to. But I bought a new one of these switches with the wire leads from Summit Racing. Uh, and it, it's the same setup. It's a switch for this. So apparently there is a, some rate of failure there if they're, if they're selling this part as a separate piece. Um, so my plan is to replace this. I'll go ahead and test the vacuum again real quick just so that I can test it before and after replacing the switch and make sure that I can adjust the new switch, which I've got right here, to have it turn on at, say, 10 or 15 inches of vacuum instead of uh, the 20 inches that we're getting right now. All right, so I have the fuse in and I have the ignition on and I have my vacuum gauge connected up to the vacuum port which used to go to the brake booster. So right now I'm showing 20 inches of vacuum and normally this pump should come on if it gets below 15 inches and then bring it back up to 20. But what we're seeing is if we come down even a little bit it comes back up almost immediately. So it doesn't go down to the 15 where it should. So that means when the engine idle changes and the normal vacuum changes, it's coming on too often and running too long because we don't always have 20 inches of vacuum when the engine's running. So what I'm hoping is by replacing this sensor, I will be able to make adjustments to it be able to have it come on somewhere below 15. I think uh, 12 or so would probably be fine. And it'll still bring it up to 20 if it kicks on. Uh, certainly if the engine dies, there'll be essentially no vacuum. And so it'll bring it up to 20, which should give me plenty of vacuum. Um, one thing I noticed is when I got the cover off to this, this is an aluminum, um, it's like machined aluminum, and uh, appeared to be maybe a steel cover uh, it was obviously not watertight. There's been moisture in there, lots of rust. So I'm going to need to try to clean this up a little bit. I don't think this is causing any of the problems, but I don't want this to get worse because if, if this falls apart, I'll end up having to either you know, make a terminal block somewhere else or get a whole new pump mechanism, which is, I think, $300. So it would be, be best if I can get this cleaned up, seal it, maybe put um, a little piece of rubber or something around this, at least some, some grease to help seal that and keep water out in the future. 
Okay, so we have the new pressure switch installed and it's working better. I was able to make adjustments to it. I also cleaned up the wiring here and I, am, I don't think there's a good way to seal around the top and around the cover here. So I think I'm going to put some protectant on the terminals. You know, I'll probably put a little grease around um, the, the seal here to try to keep moisture out. Maybe a little bit of silicone or something around that seal there, um, just to keep it clean. But I think some protectant on that on those terminals will help keep the corrosion away in the future. But now that I have this adjusted, I'm going to show what's happening here. So right now it's at 20 inches of vacuum. If we go down a bit, it doesn't kick on immediately. So I go down. When we get close to 15, it comes back up. And so that's the way that I, I want it to work. I don't want it to come on immediately as soon as the pressure comes down. I want it to go down a bit closer to 15 and then come up. I think that will mean that this pump won't be running nearly as much under normal driving conditions. Um, I did discover something interesting in that my old switch was probably fine. And it, there weren't very good instructions for this on the internet or on the manufacturer's website. They talked about the set screw, which I have here. Um, they talked about a cap and things like that that this doesn't seem to have. All I could find was this adjustment screw. What I found is as I was trying to adjust the new part, which I assumed would be working correctly, it was working exactly the way the old one was. And so I took the set screw all the way out and found that there is another screw, another Allen screw that this engages to. And this one is really just a set screw to keep the other one from moving. And so all of my twisting back and forth, moving this one in and out was pointless because that wasn't actually where the adjustment is. So my old switch is probably fine, but I already have this one installed. I required a good one for me to figure this out. Uh, so lesson learned on that, um, probably didn't have to spend the $60 for the, the new part, but it's working the way I wanted to. I was able to understand what was happening and diagnose the problem. And now I think I won't have any more of those annoying problems with the pump coming on all the time. So I'm going to call this job done. I need to do a little bit of uh, a buttoning up to close things up. But other than that, I think we've got the vacuum pump working again.